party's economy to cr uh, cryptocurrencies. So we all know that the earliest coins date back to 600 BC and they were discovered by archaeologists in the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, which is near Izmir in Turkey. And these older Lydian coins were made of the gold and silver. And there was an image of a lioness on it, just to show the power of money. Just from the beginning, they tried to uh, make it as powerful as uh, as very powerful as possible. So uh, the appearance of coinage was a revolutionary turning point, I think, in people's life. And but of course, uh, they made our life very practical and easier too. Coins made the movement of goods easier, made it possible to connect distant parts of the world, and it became one of the main drivers of economic and social development. Uh, within one slide, I tried to show, I know it's a very simplification of the history of money, but just I tried to put within one slide the most important turning point. So at around 5000 BC, there was a barter economy, so we directly exchange goods and services, and then at around 4000 BC, uh, they discovered Sumerian cuneiform tablet scripts, and then uh, at around 600 BC, uh, Lydian gold coins at the same time period at Athenian Brahma. But I think there was another important point in the history of money or financial system, which was 1553. They, uh, they invented, let's say, early joint stock companies in England. And they begin to form companies in which investors buy shares and share its rewards. So this was a very important, I think, turning point as well. And we all know in 1999, they introduced Euro, and then after two years, they introduced banknotes and coins. And in, uh, after 2000, we uh, started to see the appearance of digital monies, and yesterday, uh, dear Jorga explained us how uh, popular now uh, are cryptocurrencies and especially Bitcoin. So just within a very, very simple way, I tried to uh, summarize the, the history, historical background of uh, money. So on, we talk a lot about this. Money is worth only what someone else is willing to give you something for. But credit as a word is a Latin word and credit means it comes from credo, which means I believe. So we kept talking about trust, and credibility, accountability, transparency, just from the beginning of the round table meeting. So even credit means I believe. So it, it shows the importance of trust and our values. And the evolution of credit and debt was as important as any technological innovation in the rise of civilization. Okay. Again, within one slide, I tried to, we all know the functions of money. So money is actually as we said, a very important invention and it makes our life more practical, easier. And it, it, there are lots of functions, but the most important ones, it is a unit of account, common measure of value, medium of exchange, means of payment, standard for deferred payments, store of value, look at asset, framework of the market allocative system, which means prices, a causative factor in the economy and controller of the economy. So it has got lots of uh, very practical, uh, functions and that's why I think it is that much important. There are different ideas and beliefs about money, whether it is good or bad. We all know that th this saying is, is known by everyone, money makes the world go round, they say. But it, we have also the biblical warning, the love of money is the root of all evil. But of course, there is an opposite, total opposite idea as well. Bernard Shaw said it is rather the lack of money which is the root of all evil. So, uh, yes, some people, they think that because of money we are having these big fights and wars, and uh, so in, uh, in the book of, in, in the religion of books, uh, in Christianity, in Islam, at the beginning, you know, they abandoned uh, the use of interest earnings. So, uh, for some people it is good, for some people it is bad. So uh, there are different 
uh, views and ideas on this. But uh, you know, very famous economic historian Neil Ferguson, he says that the ascent of money is the ascent of man, actually. So thanks to financial innovations, we moved from our subsistence economy to today's prosperity. There are uh, many researchers, they try to find an answer to this question, why some countries are more developed than others. And they gave different answers, including the quality of institution, geography, culture. But among all these answers, there is one unanimously accepted reason. The countries who went far in first banking, bond markets, corporate finance, and they made advances in insurance, mortgage finance, consumer credits, they also went far in their economic development too. But we need to accept that money markets and financial markets are the basic determinants of successful real economies, and these are indispensable to the economy. And we save our money, and uh, through financial system, we put them into very promising enterprises. It helps the allocation and reallocation of available funds. And if we use financial instruments properly, for sure they will contribute to the dynamism of the economy. So uh, we shouldn't take money always as an evil instrument. It helps us. It, it creates employment opportunities for many people. And uh, through accumulation of money, capital, we can increase the well-being of people. Of course, uh, as all of us, we said, if it is used properly, the financial system is used properly. But of course, we had lots of complexities in the financial markets. Financial revolution preceded the industrial revolution. So the rise of money, credit, bond market, international finance, joint stock uh, corporations, the invention of derivatives, virtual electronic cryptocurrencies, these made financial markets very complex to understand for, uh, even for economists, not only for non-economists. So started with the debt forgiveness of Hammurabi, continuing with bankrupt nations, bankrupt companies, Black Mondays, manias, panics, bubbles. Uh, now we are having lots of uh, bubbles, crises, and that's why perhaps uh, many of us, we hate financiers, actually. Uh, we are dependent on money. I'm sorry if there are some financiers among us. So, but uh, there is a big hostility against them. I don't know whether uh, this is um, right, fair or not, uh, because I will mention within a minute uh, how through accumulation of capital, actually, we can create uh, employment opportunities for people. Again, within one slide, these are the big 10 financial bubbles. We are surrounded with them, not only the 2008. This is the one that we uh, witnessed, but there, there were a lot in the history. The most important one, Dutch tulip uh, mania, which was in 1636. And South Sea bubble, you know, this is very famous. In 1720, uh, Isaac Newton invested a lot of money on the stocks of South Sea bubble and lost a big fortune. At that time period, the amount was 20,000 pounds, which was the equivalent of $3 million in 2008 prices. And he said, I uh, calculate the uh, movement of heavenly bodies, but I couldn't uh, predict the madness of people. So that's why we are having lots of problems in these markets, even psychological. And he abandoned all of his friends to talk about Satsi in the rest of his life. So you can see the others, Asian crisis, in the crisis in Mexico, even in the very developed part of the world, in uh, between 1985, 1989, Finland, Norway, Sweden. So we are having more severe economic crisis now. Then this was followed with, of course, the one that we all know, uh, the, the 2008 crisis. And uh, in the financial, okay, before the, 2008 crisis, see this is not the guilt of the system, actually it is the uh, guilt of greedness of people. The, uh, the global money rose from $25 trillion to $70 trillion in the seven years before the crash of 2008, which was uh, not a proportionately much bigger increased growth than the real economy, so it was not very natural. So. Uh, if you intervene with a greatness to the system, of course, you will have severe uh, unexpected 
unwanted results of all these interventions. Uh, and nowadays we are having a lot unpresented volatility in the price of commodities, currencies, real estate and stocks, and we are having more frequent severe financial crisis. You know these are called black swan events. Uh, many of us know the meaning of this. These are low probability but big impact events. We don't know uh, within how many years they may occur, but uh, if they happen, it will give us a, a serious unexpected results. Okay, uh, just to give you an idea how severe are these crises, uh, the Goldman's flagship fund, Global Alpha Fund, has lost 27% of its value just within 2007. And the CFO of this uh, company said, we were seeing things that were 25 standard deviation moves uh, several days in a row. So what does this mean? Uh, 25 standard deviation, within how many years it could happen, I don't know. But if uh, there is five standard deviation from the average, this means that it may happen within 10,000 years only once. So I don't know 25 deviation move put, uh, that where you can put it. And even the Queen Elizabeth, when visited the opening of a new building of London School of Economics, she said, it's awful, why nobody see it coming? So because of this chaos, complexity, and uh, the change in the system, uh, we couldn't make precise predictions. So, uh, we, we couldn't see what is coming in the next step. So that's why actually we hate financiers, we hate perhaps rich people, and we are talking about values and power, uh, but this is not the field of the system, I think. Yes, this is to show you, uh, see here, uh, five standard deviation, uh, deviation falls uh, where? Within 10,000 years, only it happens one. So 25 standard, how he calculated this, I don't know, but he said, we are observing such movements. And Okay, these are the words that we use now to, to frighten people, Frankenstein finance, inflation finance, consumer, consumerism, credit card nations, pigs with wings, I want to talk about this. 30 to 1 leverage, what does this mean? We borrow dollars and then uh, use leverage and uh, 30 million borrow dollars in play for every million actually owned uh, money and that's why if we deregulate the financial market, see what happens, we are surrounded with uh, the lifespan of companies are going down and we are having more bankruptcies and etc. Uh, I will miss this part. You know, uh, these complexities are increasing. As Yorgo said yesterday, Bitcoin, if we rank it according to its market capitalization rate, now it comes to the 25th ranking. And uh, the hostility for uh, financiers coming from where? Unfair earnings, unethical practices, and greed. The CFO Goldman Sachs in 2008 earned 73.7 million in salary. So that's why I think uh, because of this unfair uh, distribution of uh, income, we hate them. But we need them. We need them. Why? Uh, why it is very important. When we are talking about value, there are different definitions. Some companies are creating value, some of them are transferring value, some of them are ex extracting value, but the last one is important, some of them are destructing value. So we need creative, productive businesses, value creation, not only uh, value transfer or extraction. We just, uh, because financial system is now dominating the real sector, we think that uh, we, we this is unfair, but actually we need to produce in a sustainable way uh, and through conscious capitalism. So uh, we need entrepreneurs, and why we need them to create employment opportunities. And you know Nassim Nicholas Talib, which is called as a famous philosopher, he said, we need to declare national day for entrepreneurs. You took a risk, you invested your money, and you lost your money perhaps, but we are uh, grateful to you because you tried to create job opportunities. If we don't have these kind of risk takers, then we couldn't go further. Uh, that's why we, when we are talking about money and financial sector, uh, no need to be totally biased. I mean, because we observe the greatness of people, 
It's not fair always to blame them. Okay, we need to teach our kids uh, what money cannot buy, the change in our values. We are talking about education. You are not rich until you have something that money can't buy. Respect, time, health, family. These are, but unfortunately now we are uh, teaching our kids if you want to be more powerful, you need to earn more. Yes, we need this, but we need something else as well. Okay. Yes, this is what we do actually. Sorry to say this, all of us. Too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. So that's why I think we are having serious problems. So how, this is our culture, but I don't know, it is, you know, talk is cheap, we are talking, but I don't know how we can change this culture and create new values. This is a big problem because culture, the things that we learn from our grandmothers and fathers, it's not that much easy to change them. So that's why we need perhaps sociolog sociologists, anthropologists, I don't know how we can uh, destroy our selfish gene, but for uh, for competition, for incentives, motivation, perhaps we need selfish genes as well, but not such dominant way. So thank you for your patience and uh, attendance. Thank you so much.